If you want to start your blog today, but you feel overwhelmed by the amount of information there is out there and you simply don't know where to start, you came to the right place. Because nearly 97% of people that will start their own blog will give up before reaching any significant audience because simply they cannot set up blog the proper way. That's why I created this video. This will lead you step by step. We're gonna go from complete blank Google page to creating something looking like this. It will be awesome working and really, really fast website for you. So you will have no trouble attracting people on your website. As you can see, people on the internet can charge you hundreds or even thousands of dollars in order to create these blogs or websites for you. But you can actually do it by yourself pretty easily with simple guide like this. There are three possible outcomes for people who will complete this video. First, it's a very, very optimistic. Only around 5 to 10% of people will be in this group. And those are people who will find out that it's actually really, really easy to go and start their own blog or website on the internet today. And they will actually go and create their own business or they will offer their own services of creating blogs or websites. And they will start earning money in this way. Now, this is a very optimistic scenario. Majority of you will be in average scenario. This is around 80 to 90%. And those people will be able to go and create their own blog completely by themselves. So they will save hundreds or even thousands of dollars and they will learn a valuable skill they can learn later in their life. But be aware, there's also a worst case scenario. There will be around 5 to 10% people in this category. Those are simply people who are not patient enough in order to create something on their own. But the good news for those people is, if you finish only first two steps of this five step process, you can still save a significant amount of money because you will be able to do something on your own and you can hire someone else to do the rest for you. So you can still save anywhere between 100 to even 600 dollars. And one last thing before we start is really, really important. You may feel really, really overwhelmed, but think about it. Nobody was actually born with this knowledge. Everybody who has ever created a blog or website had to learn it somehow. And you are not exception. You are just learning it right now. Look at this website. This was actually my first website. It was absolutely hideous and nobody would ever click on it. But I have actually had to learn a lot of stuff over a long period of time. And that's why I created this video for you. So you can skip this many, many month process of learning all of those stuff, skip on this imaginary line into a place where you can actually go create your own blog and start driving traffic to your blog post from day one. So let's get right into it. I've actually decided to explain it to you how to build your first blog in five simple steps. Firstly, we need to go and take a look what is actually web hosting and if you need one. You may not even know it, but you are actually even now connected to some web server. To be exact, you are watching this from YouTube's web server. And you may be now asking, well, what is that? Well, every single website on the internet consists of many elements, such as images, text, the videos, buttons, and stuff like that. And there has to be stored on one single location. But here is the catch. For example, my site is a little site. It can be under one gigabyte. But they are also huge size, and I mean huge size. Imagine sites like Amazon or YouTube. They have hundreds and hundreds of terabytes of data. And your personal computer can simply not have downloaded every single website on its memory because it doesn't have enough memory. So there has to be some middleman. And that's exactly what web hosting actually is. Let's take a look at this example. Let's say you want to go to a site called simplerecipes.com. What is actually happening when you click on that link is that your computer will send a request via the internet to a web server, basically saying, hey, we want to go to this website, give us all the correct images, tags, the videos, buttons and everything so we can access it. And the web server is like, yeah, I am on it and start searching throughout its database until they find the correct file, the one you are requesting, and they will send it to you in a response so you will start to download from that web server all of the stuff. So your website will start downloading on your computer. So basically, web servers are those super powerful computers that will allow your website to be accessible 24-7 to everyone around the world. So you will be paying a monthly fee that will allow your website to be visible on the internet for everyone. Now this was the web hosting part. We also have the domain. This is basically the name of your website. 
we have the domain name which is the blue part the name of your website and we also have the red part the top level domain which can be your .com .net .org or even if you are living in a specific region or country you can have specific top level domain for example for uk you can get .co.uk because it's specific for that country but for this video we are going to be focusing on the usa so we're gonna go with .com and i would highly suggest you to go with .com as well now in this specific tutorial i'm going to be showing you how you can go and create it with bluehost because as of today it's one of the most popular web hosting companies on the entire world and they are basically targeting beginner bloggers which is great for you and you can get a really great deal you cannot get anywhere else now if you want to get this deal i am actually affiliated with them so whenever you will go and purchase throughout my link they will give me some small commission but if you don't feel like it you don't need to do it but it will allow me to make this video completely for free and it will not cost you anything so you can simply go click the link in the description or go to lookanons.com forward slash bluehost and it should take you to this site. And now you can see we have two options, WordPress made easy and web hosting done right. Now, even though we are creating a WordPress website, we actually don't wanna go with that option. We wanna go with web hosting done right because it's a shared hosting. It will allow you to do a lot more stuff. So definitely go with shared hosting. So I'm gonna click on host your site and they will show you basic plans you can choose from. Even though they are recommending the choice plus, I would highly suggest you start with the basic, the cheapest one. And remember, you can always upgrade when you outgrow this plan. So you don't need to waste money from get go, even when your blog isn't getting that much traffic. So we're going to go with the basic one. Here you want to go and choose your domain. So firstly, I'm going to go and select the correct top level domain, which in this case is going to be .com. Now, whenever you go, and choose something that's already taken, for example, luca.com, I'm gonna hit next. It will show you this message that this domain cannot be registered because it's already taken. Now, in this case, you just need to be creative and try to come up with something of your own that will actually allow you to create the domain. So I'm gonna go with something like this and I'm gonna hit next. So now we can see that our domain is available, which is great. And here you can go and put all of your information. Now, be careful. I don't know why, but many people actually in this account information are putting their fake name, fake addresses and stuff like that. You definitely don't want to do that because when you are registering your domain, you are going to be registered on a public place and you definitely want to go and give your real information because whenever you want to have some problems, you actually want to be known as a correct owner of that website so people cannot take advantage of you. So I would highly suggest you to go here and put up your real information. Here you can go and choose the package information you like. Here we have account plan. For me currently, the basic 12 month price is the best, but if you see something different, you can go and choose that. Here we can see we're gonna have our domain for free in just for the first year. And we also gonna get SSL certificate for free, which is really good because it's gonna make our site secure for our visitors. Here we can see they are trying to upsell you some different stuff. So even though you are currently paying $33 for hosting, you can see your total is $116 because of those extras, but you don't actually need a lot of them. So sidelock security essentials, you don't need it. CodeGuard basic, you actually don't need it as well. Now domain privacy, I would actually suggest you to go with it. Let me show you what it actually is. As you can see in this example, Bluehost is providing us Whenever you're registering your domain, as I mentioned, it has to be registered in a public place so everybody can find it out. It's basically a law, so you cannot go around it. And everybody can go and find out your real name, where you live, what's your real phone number, your email address and stuff like that. And many people don't feel comfortable sharing those information. So they will go for who is protection or other known as domain privacy. What is it actually going to do is that Bluehost is going to take your real information and they will take their company information and they will hide your real information under their company information. So whenever someone is searching for this domain, they will not find your information, but they will find Bluehost information. Now, don't worry, officially you are still registered as owner and you own this domain, so you don't need to worry about it at all. But if you are worried about your performance, no, it will not affect negatively your performance of your website if you don't choose to go for it. It's just something 
you want to get if you want to have peace in mind and I personally get it always when I'm getting my domain. So here you're obviously going to go and put up your payment information. Here you can go read all of the terms of services, cancellation policy and stuff like that. And if you agree, you're going to hit agree. Please click here if you don't want to receive emails. Let's say I don't want to go and receive them. So I'm going to hit that and I'm going to submit. Here you need to go and put up your password. So go and put something in there and they will start asking you a weird question. You can basically skip all of them, but when you see this question, when you have these two options, you definitely gonna go with WordPress because it will allow you to get limitless customization, which will not be possible with the different options. So definitely go with the WordPress limitless customization, even though they are trying to say different, you don't actually want to go there. And after everything, you should be in your Bluehost account. So you have just successfully created your first web hosting and you are currently live technically. So here you can go and see, for example, marketplace, they will try to upsell you a lot of stuff. Here in domains, if you actually see this as unverified, you need to go to your email and verify it by clicking on a simple link. So make sure you do that. But when you finally want to go and access your website, you're going to go to my site. And you're going to see here only one website because you have just created it and you want to go and click on manage site. Here you can go and look around this, but for this example, we only need to go to security and definitely make sure that both of those are put on. So SSL certificate and also enforced HTTPS definitely want to have both of those on and here you have also settings, but if you want to go and access your website, simply click into this login into WordPress. And as you can see, you have just successfully created your website. So this is your WordPress dashboard. Now I know it looks a little bit cluttered, but we can deal with it really easily. So now if you want to go and actually visit your website, you're going to go hover over this house and click on it. And you can see this is your website. So when I'm going to take it and put it inside incognito mode as a new visitor, you're going to see something interesting because you will actually not be allowed to access this website. You can see that this website is coming soon. So how do we fix that? Well, it's really simple. Let's go back to our Bluehost account and once again, go to manage site and here on your website, click on settings. And here you're going to scroll down and you can see this coming soon page. Simply turn that off. And now, once again, when I'm going to go copy my website, put it inside incognito mode, you can see everybody can now access it from all around the world. But now let's go back to our Bluehost and let's clean it up a little bit because we can see there is a lot of clutter we don't actually need. So firstly, let's go get rid of some things. So we need to go to plugins. You can think about plugins like your applications in your smartphone. So you're going to get your basic smartphone, which can do some stuff, but really the application are the stuffs that are making it useful and possible to use. And this is kind of similar with WordPress, but also as your smartphone is really annoying when it comes with pre-installed stuff. So what we want to go and do is clean everything up and start from a clean sheet. So here you can go and select it one by one or simply go click inside this one square and it will select everything automatically. Now we're going to go and firstly we need to go and deactivate all of them. So I'm going to click on deactivate, hit apply and it will actually turn off every single plugin. Then once again, I need to go and select all of them and hit delete. I'm going to apply. They will ask us if we are sure. Yes, we are. And you can see it deleted everything. Now the same thing we're going to go and do with our post. I'm going to go select them and now we need to go and move them to trash. I'm going to go and hit apply and you can see inside here, it appeared new icon called trash. I'm going to click on it and here I'm going to go and delete it permanently. And the last thing we're going to do is go to our pages and once again, move them to trash and delete them permanently. Now, we have clean website without any content inside here. So we can actually start creating it from zero to a hero. So now let me actually explain everything you see in here. So firstly, we have our dashboard, which is basically the first page you're going to see and you have some basic information around it. We don't need to worry about it that much. 
post, those are your blog posts. So whenever you are writing some content, it will actually show up in here and you're gonna have all of your posts selected in here and you can also go here and create new posts. We have media, which will store all of the photos, the videos of your website and you can go and simply access them. Pages, they are basically the pages of your website. So you have your home page, you have your recipe page and stuff like that. In this example, this is what our page is gonna look like. We have comments. If you're gonna have visitors writing with the comments, you're gonna be able to see them in here. Appearance of our website is gonna change the layout of our website and overall look of our website. So we're gonna get rid of this weird bird that's inside here. Then we have plugins, as I already mentioned, those are basically your additional application that will allow you to do more with WordPress. Then we have user, whenever you want to go and get new users. So for example, you will grow and you will have some writers. You can go and add them up inside here. You can also go and edit yourself. So you can, for example, go and write your first name and stuff like that. You can put up your photo. So whenever you write a blog, people are actually going to see your photo. Here you can go and change up the password for your WordPress. So you can have it even separate from your Bluehost password, which is great. And never forget to also update changes. Definitely don't forget it because I usually did it and it was pain in the ass to go back and find out why it didn't work. Now we have some tools. You will actually don't need it as a complete beginner. So you don't need to worry about it. But settings, this is really important because here, for example, you can change the, your site title you can see currently it's set up on web. So I'm gonna change it to, for example, block test. Here we can go and change our tagline. So when I hover over our website, you can see that currently we don't have any tagline, but if I'm gonna go and write easy tutorial for building block, I'm gonna go and hit save changes. You can see now when I hover over this website, when I gotta go, reload this website and hover over it, it will actually show it to you inside here, which is really cool. Now we can go and keep all of this stuff up. You can go and change, for example, your site language, what date format you wanna go and use, what time format, whether your week starts on Monday or Sunday and stuff like that, and all additional stuff. But the important part is go into permalinks. You wanna go into settings, click permalinks, and make sure that you are not using the plain one, but you actually want to go and use post name. Here's the example of what it actually does currently on the screen. So you can see the first one is really ugly and people don't like it. And the second one is currently what we have selected, the post name, which will actually show permalink with your current post name, which is a way better option. So I'm going to go and hit save changes. Now we have set it up all the basics, but now let's get rid of this bird finally. So what you want to go and do is go to appearances and hit add new. What we are searching for is something called Astra theme. If you don't see it inside here, don't worry, you can just go and search for it inside here, right Astra, and it should show up in here. What we want to go and do is go and click on install. And now don't forget to hit activate it. So now when we have activated our theme, you can see that when I reload this site, the bird is finally gone, but now it looks kind of plain. So let's add some stuff really fast. Now I'm going to show you a little trick because it's kind of hard to start completely from scratch. You want to have some examples, something you can go and jump off. And I'm going to go and go to plugins and show you the way to get one. So we're going to go add new plugins. And here we want to go and search for something called starter templates. Now, those starter templates are working with Astra theme. So it will probably not work with many other themes. So keep that in mind. So once again, I'm going to go and hit activate it. And now when I'm going to go and hover over appearances, we can see that our starter templates we have just activated are in here. So I'm going to go click on them and click on build now. Now here, definitely want to go and select Elementor. You don't want to go with Beaver Builder or even basic block editor. Elementor is by far the best choice. And here you can go and see many different stuff. You can even go 
and search for something special. So for example, if you're looking for a blog, you can go and find all of those categories and see which one you like. Now remember, the premium ones, you're gonna have to pay something extra, but you don't actually need to go for them. I personally would go for this basic page, Love Nature, and you can go and click around if you like it, see what they are offering, you can see. We actually like this website, so I'm gonna go and hit skip and continue. Here we can change the colors, but we don't need to do it in here. I'm gonna go and hit continue once again. And here, you, once again, don't need to put any of your information, basically. And I like to also uncheck share non-sensitive data. And then I'm gonna go submit my website. And this will take from anywhere from 15 to 40 seconds to create your website. And now you can see it actually took us only 17 seconds. So now when I'm gonna go and hit view my website, you can see that our website looks completely different. And we can actually go from inside here and customize all of this. Now I will also show you then when I go back to plugins, you can see that start templates also downloaded Elementor as we selected and also WP form slide, which is basically contact us form. But now, firstly, let's create our first blog post. Because we can see that there is some content in here, but we don't have our blog post. And believe me, you want to go and actually put up your blog post before you start customizing the look of your website. Because when you are creating your blog, the blog post really should be the focus of your website. So I would highly suggest you to start with a blog post. Now, whenever you want to go and create your blog post, you simply want to go to post and click add new. It will take you to this blog editor. So we can go and close this down. And here we can actually start adding our blog. Now for this example, I'm going to recreate this blog post because I really, really like it what they did inside here. It has everything from headings to links to bullet points, to images, and even videos. Now, the one important thing I wanna share with you is definitely don't go and don't write in WordPress. I think it's way better to use something, for example, like Google Docs, to go and create your blog posts first, and then simply copy them inside there. So, for example, this is our heading. We're gonna go and add, put it into add title inside here. Now, we can see that in here, we are gonna be creating our blog from simple blocks. So let's say I wanna go and copy our first paragraph. I'm gonna go and put it inside here. Now when I hit enter, it will create new block. And let's just say I wanna go and add picture in here. So I'm gonna go, click on image and hit upload. Now I already created some trips, so I'm gonna go. So for example, let's put up this picture inside here. I'm gonna go and upload it in here. You can see it can take a few seconds to upload. And you can even go and add caption inside here. Now, let's say you wanna go and move this a little bit up. So you can go and simply drag it and move it like this. Or you can go and hit this simple arrow and it will move it one box up. But you don't need to do it one by one. You can actually go and select everything inside here and simply copy it in here. And WordPress automatically knows what is what, so they will start to add all of the correct links, all of the correct headings, and stuff like that. So I wanna go and copy everything. So you can simply copy everything and then paste it inside here and WordPress will automatically go and adjust everything as they should, which is super easy. I really would recommend you to go and do it in this way. You can see that they are also taking pictures for yourself, which is also really, really cool. Now let me add, for example, this one image inside here. So we're gonna go and place it inside here. I'm gonna go hover in between those two blocks. It will appear this plus sign, I'm gonna click on it. And here, if you don't see something you want, you can go to Browse All. And here you have all the options you can have in the wall. So I'm gonna go and select image in this case. And once again, I'm gonna go and upload image I want. It's gonna be this one. 
and I'm gonna hit open it and it will load up. And now I can see this is our blog post. If you want to go and see it before you publish it, you can go and hit preview and you can see this is what your first blog post would look like. Now I know it doesn't look that good, but we can go and fix that easily. But before that, let's adjust a few things inside here. So firstly, we're gonna go into permalinks, make sure that this is set up as we set it up. So it will actually show up the name of the blog post. Then we're gonna go to categories. And here we're gonna go and uncheck unknown and actually create new category. Now this is really important when you are a blogger to have organized everything inside categories. Because when you are starting up, you're gonna have sense of what is what, but when you're gonna have dozens or even hundreds of blog posts, it's way easier and organized to have it inside specific categories. Now also remember, you can have one blog post in multiple categories. So for example, if you are making vegetable tacos, you can have it inside recipes, inside vegan recipes, inside dinner ideas, and all of those different categories, so you don't need to stick to only one. In this example, I'm going to go and add new category and I'm going to name it my tips and click add new category and we can see it's added up inside there. Then we're going to go into feature image. This is actually what will show on our website. So in this example, you can see all of those images are feature images. So I'm going to go and hit set new image and I'm going to upload the image I would like. So for example, this one. So you can see it's kind of cropped into square. It doesn't look that good. Well, we can go and adjust it. Simply go inside edit image. In here, you want to go to aspect ratio and put it one to one because it's going to be square. Hit crop sign and it will actually automatically select you one by one square. I'm going to go select our person. Here you want to go and once again, click on the crop icon. It will actually crop the image for you. And you want to go and hit save so it will actually save those changes and once again set it as a feature image and we can see that this looks really good now when you want to go and publish it you can simply go inside here and you can publish it you can also schedule it for a specific time or you can even protect it by password or put it on private which is good whenever you are pre-writing your articles or you have some staff writers writing for you and you want to actually go and approve it so you can actually go and put it inside all of those different modes but for this example I'm going to be showing you we can go and publish it right away so I'm going to go and hit publish now we can see that our post is visible but it doesn't look that good it actually looks pretty bad it has this weird green background I don't like the color of those links this image here is doubling for some reason. So let's fix all of that. We actually want to go and go to customize. And when you go to customize and you change something, it will change it on all of your site. So even though you want to go and make changes after you have already created a lot of blog posts and you, for example, want to go and change font on them, you don't actually need to go one by one. You can simply go and customize it in here and inside global customization, you can go and change everything on your website from one single click, which is really powerful. Now I'm gonna go to global and let's say we're gonna go and start with colors. Now we can see that our text color and our heading color are set on green, but I don't actually like it. So I'm gonna go set up my color of headings on black and text color on something more grayish. Now this looks really good. We can go and hit on site background and content background as well. Because we have this weird green background, I will go to content background and change this to a white background. Or even you can go inside here and hover this lower bar and lower the opacity. So it will actually be transparent background. And whenever you will choose to decide for different background style, it will automatically take it inside there. So now this looks already way better than when we started. So I'm gonna go and save changes. You can do it by hitting this publish icon in here. And I'm gonna go back into typography. In here, we can go and change a lot of style. For example, we can see that in original post, 
then actually separated those paragraphs, which is way better for the eyes. In our example, everything is squished together kind of. So we can go and adjust it easily inside this paragraph margin. You can see when I'm moving it, it actually starts to move up all of those content. I would like to put it on, let's say, 1.8. It looks really good. And here we can also change different styles. For example, we can go for body font, which is inside here. I'm going to go and change it to a railway font. And you can see the font has changed. I have actually pre-created it for you, so you can go and screenshot this or take photo of it if you want to have inspiration. And this is going to be basically our logo, our favicon. This is the two fonts I'm going to be using, so Laura font and Railway font. And those are the specific color palette I'm going to be using as well. So if you feel like doing the same as I am, you can go and take inspiration from this. Now we can see that this is our blog post. I want to go and increase the size of our blog post. Let me just show you what would happen if you put it on 46. You can see how big it is. But I would actually suggest you go with something around 18. I think that's a good number. It's visible and it's not too big as well. So this looks really good. You can go put up the boldness of your site so you can actually make it ultra bold, for example. But yeah, I think you can go and stick with the normal one. You cannot go wrong with that. Here you can select, for example, line height. So actually how spread up are different lines from each other. And if you made, for example, a mistake, you can always go to this rotating arrow, click on it, and it will take you to your previous selection. Here we have also our heading font, so we can see it in here. I actually want to go and change them to Laura to make it visually different. And also make them a little bit bigger. If we want to go and make them bigger, we have to actually do it inside here. So those are all H2 fonts. So I'm going to go and put up the size up a little bit in here. And maybe this is maybe a little too much. So I'm going to go and lower it to 40. And now I think this looks really good. Now let's also change the color of those links. Because they are yellow and you cannot actually see them. So once again. You can see, uh, WordPress reminded us, do we want to save our changes? Yes, we do. So I have to hit publish. Now I'm going to go and exit this one. Hit customize. And now I'm going to go and change the color of our links. So once again, global, colors. And you can see here, inside here, link colors. I'm actually going to go and copy this color. And put it inside here. And I'm gonna hit enter. And you can see that it's currently blue. I'm actually gonna go and change this to something different like this. So that it's actually, people can actually see it. Control V. This looks much, much better. And also we can change link hover color, which basically means whenever someone hovers over your link, it will slightly change the color. So what I actually like to do is go put up this simple color and make it a little bit lighter. So now when people are gonna go and hover over it, they will see some responsiveness in there, which is really good. And this starts to look great in my opinion. So now we can go and deal with some different stuff. So I'm gonna go and click on block, single post. And here we can actually select what we wanna show and what we don't wanna show. So we can see this is the duplicating our image, which I don't like because it's showing us feature image. So I'm gonna turn that off. We can see the top left is gonna disappear and it has already disappeared. Now we have the name of our blog post and also this weird meta stuff which we don't like. So I'm gonna go and unselect everything and you can see it just disappeared. So this is a really clean blog post and you can see that it looks awesome. So I'm gonna go hit publish it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and add more content of camera. I am back and as you can see, I've added up a few blog posts and now, finally, we can go and change the look of our website. So let me go and actually see it inside here. Whenever you want to go and change the look of your website, simply going to go and hover over this administration bar and click on Edit with Elementor. 
It will actually take you to this easy drag and drop editor, so you don't actually need to code anything, and you can still create great looking websites. Now inside here you can see, you can simply go and start doing a lot of different stuff in here. But let's start from the beginning and let's delete all of this. So firstly, if you want to go and create something of your own, go inside here and click on this plus sign. It will show you those options and you want to go and click on this plus one. And in this example, our website is going to consist of two blocks. So first one is going to be primarily for our post and the second one is going to be our small sidebar. So we're going to go for this double one. But here we can see the first problem and is that it's not wide enough. What does it mean? When I go and add image inside here and let's say I want to go and choose those, this country and when I'm going to go and duplicate it inside here, we can see that it's kind of weird. We can actually go and change dimensions of this. Currently we have it set it up on box, but we can go and put it up on full width and you can see that it will automatically stretch it up to full width of your website. So you can see it's really, really wide. But we don't actually want that, what we're gonna go with is box and we're gonna put our specific value because when you hover with width, you can see, you can play around with it. Now I already know I want 1300 and I'm gonna go and hit update it. But I actually don't like that those sides are even. For our sidebar, we want actually it to be much, much smaller. So you can go and adjust it by hand inside here. You can see I'm moving it and it's adjusting. Or you can simply go, click on this black bar and here put up some percentages. So I want our sidebar to be one third. So I'm gonna go and put up in here 33.3% and we can see it's right on, it's 33%, so one third. So I'm gonna go and hit update changes. Now I'm gonna go and delete those images and I wanna go and add up some posts in here. But here is the problem. Elementor actually doesn't allow you to do that in basic free version. They want to go and get some money from you, but you don't actually need to pay for them anything because I found out this little cool trick I'm going to show you. It includes one more plugin, but it's really good. So I'm going to go and hit add new and search for something called unlimited elements for Elementor. And you can see it inside here. Whenever you are choosing your plugin, you actually want to be really, really careful. So go inside here and take a good look at their reviews. I'm going to go and click on one star reviews. What am I looking at is actually the recency of bad reviews, because you can see in this example, they have some one star reviews, but all of them are over one year old. So we can see that within one year, Nobody actually had some big issue with this plugin. And when I'm gonna go and click on five stars, you can see that it's really recent. One day ago, five days ago, six days ago, two weeks ago. So we can see that currently people have really good experience with it and it's been like that for a long time. So we can see that this plugin is really good maintained and it won't hurt our website. Keep this in mind because sometimes you're gonna go and see all oh, 4.8 out of 5 but all of the 1 star reviews are within like 1 month and you don't actually have that much 5 star reviews which is gonna tell you that currently this plugin is not working and you should stay away from it. But we can clearly see that this is the not case with unlimited elements so I'm gonna go back and install it. Here once again don't forget to put activate it and they will show you this window. Now you actually want to go and skip this. They are trying to upsell you some stuff. You don't need it. And here you have many options, but you actually want to go and get only the post one. So we're going to go to post. And once again, some of them are paid, but we are good with our free version. We can create amazing stuff with it. So we're going to go and download those free ones. And also this post in here. And that's everything we will need. We don't need to set up anything else. We simply need to go to Elementor, reload our site, and it will be automatically put up into our Elementor. So now when I want to go and search for post, you can see that they've added up new functions in there with this UI logo in here. So simply I need to go and grab post list and drag it inside here. Now I know what you are saying, 
this does not look good, but we can easily fix that. Here you're going to go and fix some weird stuff. So for example, we can go and adjust how, oh, sorry. So we can actually go and adjust how much text is shown as a preview. So currently it's set up on 100. I won't go and put it on, let's say 250. So we chose more text. Here you can see a layout. You can go and switch something off. If you don't like, for example, images, you can switch it off. I like to keep everything on. Additional data. If you want to go and show date, you can go and put it inside here. I don't like to put any additional data. People are really not interested in that. Here, content widgets, once again, you don't have to worry about it. But post query is where the magic happens. Because what is actually happening in here is showing you what's actually going to be shown on the website. So here, for example, you can see that we have currently 10 posts in here. But if I want to go and restrict it to, for example, let's say only three posts, I'm going to go and put maximum amount of posts. And we can see it's currently set up on three. But I actually like to put it, on, let's say, on eight. And let's also say sometimes when you have recurring visitors, you want to go and show them different content. So you don't actually necessarily want to have it all the time from the newest to oldest, but you want to have it randomized the order. So you can go to order by and hit random, which will actually randomize all of your blog posts. So even returning visitors will see something fresh, something new, something they haven't seen yet. So you can actually see it to the way I'm going to go refer to this website, it will actually show you different stuff in here. And we can see that currently my house cleaning tips is on page number one. You can obviously go and go and order it for example by category. So if you want to go show only one specific category, you can definitely do it inside there. But now let's change the style of this website. So in here we can see for example this once again weird gray background. We're going to go and get rid of it. So we're going to go put it on white lower transparency and we can see the background is currently white now we can see content we have some padding in here i'm gonna go and put it on default value which is zero so we don't have any of them image this one is really really small so we're gonna go and make it a little bit bigger let's say 350 by maybe 250 and this looks really good but we can see they are nearly touching those images so we can go once again fix that really easily now here's the interesting part you can see when i'm moving with one thing it's actually moving everything else but let's say i want to go and simply move this text to the right so and i don't want to go and move with anything else so you can go and unlink those values and now you can see when i'm moving left it's only moving from left side to right side. So I'm gonna go put it on 30. I'm gonna go and also put right side on 30. And then I actually squished it together more. But let's also fix those images. We're simply gonna go to items. Once again, un unlink those values. And put up a little, little padding on top. 15 looks great. And this is our blog post. It's starting to look really, really good. Now we want to go and change our title. Once again, I'm going to go to typography. I'm going to go and hit Laura and change the size. I like this size with, I want to go and put it, let's say oh, this is a little too much. So I'm going to go and put it on 600. This looks really nice. Line height, I don't need to worry about it in this case, but here's also another tip. Whenever you are doing this and you will need to change it a lot of typography, you want to go and use same stuff multiple times, but you don't want to go write font family, the word and stuff like that. You can simply go and create new global font and for example, set it on H2. And ever you will need it once again, you simply go in here and you have it pre-saved for you. The same goes with color. So I'm going to go select this color and put our text color on blue. Now, once again, I'm going to be using this blue a lot. So I definitely want to go create global color, name it however you want. It doesn't really matter and save it in here. So we can see whenever I need the same color, 
simply go inside here, click on this globe, and we can find our color. And it will automatically be applied to everything in your blog post, which is really, really nice. Now let's change the text, so exactly what we are seeing. Once again, I already know the font I'm going to be using. And also I want to make it a little bit smaller, so it doesn't pop up that much. 14 seems really good. I like the color, I like the size and also the width, so I can simply go and change it to text. And I think this looks really good, but also let's for example add some additional stuff. So also let's add for example button, so we're gonna go to layout and hit on site. Or actually we're gonna go and hit it in content. And we're gonna go in style, button, button margin, so I wanna have it a little more from the top and move it to right, so I'm gonna go and increase the left value. Let's put it on 75. Okay, we need more. So I'm gonna slowly move it inside here. We can see, ah, oh, this looks really good. 130. I'm gonna lower the top one a little bit. I think it's too much. And maybe even lower this to 5. 5, 15, and 15. I also don't like that it's actually squared. So I'm gonna go and increase the border radius, which will make it a little bit more round. And I will also change the color, so I'm gonna go use this one, this orange color. Once again, put it inside here, paste it, save the color, don't forget to always save the color. It will save a lot of time later on. I'm gonna go and name it my orange. And also, once again, button typography. You actually can go like this, but we already saved our buttons, so I'm gonna go and simply put H2. And here I can come back and, for example, make it a little bit smaller. And this looks really good. Button text color, we can go keep it inside here. I actually want to go put up weight, let's say, on 400. And we can go and keep this like this. Okay, so now let's start and build our sidebar. We're going to need a few elements. Firstly, I'm going to go and add image of ourselves as block owner. Then we're going to go and add a heading. That's going to be our name then little description about us and also a social icon so people can actually go and follow us on our social media so i'm gonna go and search for social icons and simply drag them inside here then i'm gonna go and choose divider and also we're gonna go and build those linking images so i'm gonna go and put three images inside here i can simply go and duplicate them three times and last but not least, we're gonna go and add post list. So I'm gonna go search for post and add our post list. Now I know this doesn't look any good, but believe me, just within 10 minutes it's gonna look awesome. So firstly, let's start with our image. So I'm gonna go, click on it, and whenever you wanna go and change image, simply come inside here and choose your image. As you can see, I have already uploaded my image, but if you don't see it inside here, simply go in, select files, and you can find it inside here. So I wanna go with this image. And if you don't like the dimensions of image, you can simply go, click on it, hit edit image, and you can crop it to whatever size you would like. So I'm gonna go for aspect ratio one to one, so it's gonna be square. And I'm gonna hit crop, and you can see it created this rectangle for me. So I'm gonna have only people in focus. I may even go and lower it a little bit so we can clearly see it. Now this looks awesome. And whenever you want to crop it, simply hit once again crop image and save this image. Now we're gonna go and insert it as our image. So I'm gonna go, go hit insert media and we can see image is already here. But let's say I want to go and have it circular because this doesn't look that good. Well, we can actually do it pretty easily. We're gonna go to advanced and under mask, we're gonna go and turn it on. And you can see it automatically created mask. Now, if you want something different than circle, you can, for example, go and create hexagon and stuff like that. But we're gonna go and stick with circle. Now, a different problem now is that it's a little bit too big, I think. So we can simply go and change image size inside here. You can see we have some pre-made image sizes, but I'm gonna go and for custom because I already know 
dimensions that I want to go for. So I'm going to go 300 by 300. I'm going to hit apply and you can see that it's shorter and I really like this. Now let's change the name. This block is going to be Juliet Hudson. So I'm going to go put it inside here. You can see that it's on left side. I want to go and align it to center. So I'm going to go simply hit it inside here. And inside style, I'm going to go choose typography I've already made. And I'm going to go and hit H2. You can see that it applied. And here I can simply go and adjust the size however I want it. I can go and once again use the color I have already made. So my blue. And if I want to go and bring it closer to the image, because you can see there is kind of a gap inside here. I simply go to advanced, unlink those values because I want to go and only move it up. Then I want to go and insert our description. So we're going to go hit Ctrl V and you can see we have it once again in here. Now I need to go and change typography to once again already pre-made the template. So I'm going to go and hit text and you can see that it changed. Now I can go adjust the size. I like it to be 15 and I also want to go and make it a little bit closer together. So now we are not going to go, go for mar margin because we don't want to go and move it, but we're going to go and move the inside. So we're going to go for padding and I'm going to go and adjust left side, let's say to 20 and also right side to make it even and go for 20 as well. Or this can be even too much. So I'm going to go for 15 by 15. Now this looks really good. And once again, I'm going to go move it a little bit closer. Okay, I need to go in a different direction. And I think this looks really good. I may even go and adjust the color to something grayish. And now let's put our social icon. So if you want to go and add something different, simply go to add item, click on the image, and you can choose whatever you like. So because it's block, you're probably going to need Pinterest. So if you cannot find it in here, simply write Pinterest and it will automatically show it to you. So I'm going to go hit insert and we can see we have it inside here. If I want to go and move it on the first place, simply drag it and put it into first position. And you can see it moved there automatically. Now we're going to hit add new and let's also add Instagram. I'm going to go click on it, insert and also Let's say we don't want to have Facebook inside here, so simply get rid of it. And now let's add, for example, TikTok. But here is the trick. You can see when I try to search for TikTok, it doesn't have anything in recommended. Don't worry, simply go into all icons and it will automatically find it. So we can simply add it inside here. Now I have WordPress in here. I don't know why. I'm going to get rid of it. And now let's also change colors because I don't like Instagram and TikTok being black and gray. So simply go to Instagram and change official color to custom color. And we have here our primary color, which is basically color of our background. I want to go and make it a little orangey like this. This looks really good. Maybe a little bit. Yep, this looks really good. And now also let's say change TikTok color to custom and let's put it on, let's say darker purple. Yep, something like this. If you also want to go and change the logo itself, you can go inside here, for example, make it red, but I really like to keep it clean. So I'm going to go and put it inside here. Now, whenever you want to go and actually link your social media to any of those buttons, simply go and put your link inside here for your social media and it will automatically take you in there. So let's say I want to go, for example, put my YouTube inside here. I'm going to go save it, hit update. And now when I visit this website, you can see that those links are going to work excellently. So I'm going to go, for example, on my YouTube, I'm going to click on it and voila, this is my YouTube channel. You can see it took us inside here. So you can simply go and put up all of your social media inside here and we can go and move on. Here is our divider. This is just for visual effect. Once again, let me go and bring this a little closer. This looks really good. And let's put up our divider. I actually want to go and put text inside here. So for example, we're going to go and show most popular. And this can be anything. This can be your blog post. This can be your pages. This can be your most popular text you have ever made. And let's create this. We're going to go and do it pretty simply. The only thing you need is go and upload image. 
And as you can see, I've already pre-made three images. How you're gonna go and create those images is really simple. You're gonna go select your image, you're gonna go and put black rectangle over it, lower the opacity of black rectangle, and also put some text inside there, and it's gonna look really awesome. So I'm gonna go open it, and you can also go and open multiple. So you don't need to upload one by one, but you can simply go here, select everything and hit upload, and you can see the three things are currently being uploaded. So let me go and delete this permanently because I'm gonna go and have it once again here. So let me put activities inside here. And once again, let's lower it a little bit to, let's say 400 by 400. We're gonna take a look at how it actually looks. Okay, this is still a little too much for my liking. So I'm gonna go try 250 by 250 to make it a little bit smaller. And I think we're gonna go for 300. Yes, so we have 300 by 300. Now I don't wanna go and adjust it one by one. So I simply go and duplicate this image two more times and simply go and change your picture and it will automatically keep those dimensions inside here. So once again, I'm gonna go inside here, change this picture to our about us page. And you can see that it has imported those pages. Now I can go and simply delete those one and we have it inside here. Let me go and move this out of the way. And you wanna go and simply put link inside here. So we're gonna go and put custom URL. And let's say we're gonna go and link to this post we have just created. So I'm gonna go to this post. You can see this is something we have created already. I'm gonna copy this link and paste it inside here. Let's say this is gonna be activities you wanna go your most popular blog post and you want to go to link to it. So simply put up link inside here, hit update. And now let's view changes and it will actually work. So when I click on activities, it will automatically take me to this blog post I have put link inside it. So it's really not that hard to create something like this. Now let's also adjust our blog post inside here. here we've already done it here, but we're going to go and create something different. So layout, we're gonna go to content and start adjusting it a little bit. So in post query, I simply wanna go and order it by title, let's say, and we wanna go and change style a little bit. So once again, background, put it on transparent, parent content, you can see it has already adjusted. We're gonna go put it on zero. Image, we're gonna go and make it 150 by 150, let's say. So it's actually square always. Inside content, we actually wanna go and move it a little bit to give it some breathing room. So let's put it on 15. Title, once again, I've already pre-made those, so I'm gonna go and simply adjust the height to whatever I like. I actually like it like this. A color, we can go for our blue color. Text, this is too big of a text, so I'm gonna go and lower it a lot. Text spacing, I don't want none. So let me try to go for image 100 by 100. 125 by 125. This looks really good. Once again, adjust. Let's not adjust content, but let's actually adjust items. So I'm gonna go hit padding. So we can see it's moving and also we're gonna go into content and move it a little more to the right so it has breathing room and easier to read. So this looks really good now. And once again, we can go and adjust the number, number of posts that are actually shown. Let's say I wanna go and show only five inside here. And you can see how easy it was. Here I'm gonna go and put up once again some heading. So I'm gonna go and put it inside here. My last post, I'm gonna go adjust typography a little bit to make it slower. Let's put this into 25 and let's bring this a lot more closer. So I'm gonna go put it into zero and actually move it into minus values inside here. And we can see 
it starts to look really really good and everything is working i don't know why this is here we can simply go delete it and now when you want to go and adjust this line in here for example you can see that this picture is a little higher than this block was simply go and you can adjust it inside here and you can see the cool thing is that everything is also moving down so you don't need to go and do it one by one but you can simply do it inside here and i think this looks really good so i'm gonna go and hit update now let's get rid of this first side we don't actually need it and let's also get rid of those other things we are not gonna need them let's say we're gonna go and keep those questions in here so simply go inside here go into style and we're gonna go and change background image so i'm gonna go actually apply my image which is gonna be which is gonna be this and i'm gonna go and hit insert and you can see this is really weird angle so i'm gonna go position hit custom and we can see we can go and play with our x position and y position so i'm gonna go and i actually like it how it looks like here but we cannot read this question really good so i want to go and adjust it i actually want to go and put up intersection inside here and move everything on one side also our button and this text inside here and I'm gonna go move it in here and once again because it's boxed we can go and adjust how much do we want it full width and also adjust it inside here so for boxed we're gonna go and make it like this so it's actually on size so we can go put full width in here and let's say we were gonna go and get rid of this part and we only have this talk to us now and we can go and link this simply by entering our contact us page so we're gonna go to our contact us page copy the url and simply put it inside here and it will work exactly the same as those images with links so we can go and style our button as well as we can go inside here color let's put it on white actually i really like it we're gonna go typography it's actually looking really nice text color let's put it on white let's put this on let's actually put this on transparent and we're gonna go and create a border type solid and put up some width inside there i'm gonna go put color in there and adjust our border radius so how round are our colors i'm gonna go put it inside here color of background let's make it a little bit like this text color we can go put it inside here type of color it's gonna be like this but a little bigger and the background let me adjust the background it's going to be like this and whenever someone hover over it we're gonna go and click on hover and adjust our hover color color so we're gonna go and put it a little bit darker not that much so that actually people can feel the response and we are creating good responsive design so now when somebody hovers over it they will actually feel the response now oh, this looks really good i can go and keep it like this upgrade it and this is what our website currently looks like but here is the problem we still haven't figured out our heading you can see it's kind of overlaid and we don't want it so let's customize it we actually don't want to go and make our heading with elementor but we're gonna to go to customize and make it inside there and let's adjust inside here our header builder so we're gonna to go to header builder and we want to go and move our logo on top and primary menu now we can get rid of the button and now you cannot actually see it really well so let me adjust it we're gonna go and move this inside transparent header because as you can see currently it's transparent and we're gonna go and turn that off so we have the same logo on transparent and also on our regular so i'm gonna go to site title and change this logo to something i've already prepared i'm gonna go for this logo so select make sure that everything is select it so you don't crop it at all i'm gonna go and hit insert it 
And with logo width, you can see this is really small, but we can make it a lot bigger. And we can also now finally go and adjust our buttons. So we can see that you cannot actually see them. You simply need to go to header builder, transparent header, and inside design, we're gonna go find text, menu color and text. And under here, you can see that this is currently black, which we like. And also whenever we hover over it, it's actually gonna be a little bit grayish. Now this looks really, really good. And let's also select it a little bit. So I'm gonna go to border size and put it on black so it's actually visually separated. And the same thing we wanna go and do with the lower part. So I'm gonna go to design, transparent header, and put this also at two and a black color inside here. Now let me also adjust the font inside here. So I'm gonna go to menu font and actually change it to railway and also adjust a width to make it a lot bolder. I like it to let's say 600 looks really good. And let's put our color different because I actually don't like this black. We actually want to go to header builder, transparent header, design and adjust our color to something. We can simply go inside here, copy this and insert it inside here. And we have our blog post selected. I'm gonna go and copy also this orange, which is gonna be our, our hover over color. So I'm gonna go and paste it inside here. And you can see this time it looks really, really good. So I wanna go and simply also put it into, let's say 300, so it's really big and it's really poppy. So this looks good. Margin, we can go and keep this like this. And when you want to go and save those changes, hit a publish. But obviously, here is a problem it's actually covering this text inside here and it doesn't look that good. It looks horrible, to be honest. So, simply, we need to go back to Elementor and adjust our margin. So, now we don't need to do it one by one. The thing we need to go is put edit selection, it will select everything inside this blue rectangle. And we can actually move everything at once. So we're gonna go to advanced, unlink those values, and put up plus numbers inside. And you can see that everything is moving lower and we are essentially moving the whole side a little more down. And let's say we're gonna go and put it on 250. I'm gonna go update it and review those changes. So I'm gonna go. And you can see this looks really, really good now. So this is the way how you can go and create your first block completely from scratch, even as a complete beginner. Okay, so now let me show you one more way how you can go and create blog posts. Let's say you don't like them to be displayed like this. Well, we have another options. So let me show you at least one another. We are not actually going to use post list anymore. We are going to go and use post blocks. So let me load up my Elementor. And once again, we will put it inside here. So let's search for post. And as I mentioned, we're going to go for post block and place it inside here. Now, once again, I want to create some separation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go create some heading, some text, and also some divider inside here. Now I'm gonna go and call this, I'm gonna call this my recipe ideas. Once again, I wanna go and style this text. So I'm gonna go into style and under the title, I will choose my pre-made heading and I'm gonna increase the size of it. So let's say 45, this looks about right. Now, once again, color I wanna go stay using the same colors all around the web page so it doesn't get cluttered and we have it inside here now once again we're gonna go and create some separation so we can simply go to advanced and move everything with the heading so i'm gonna go and increase it like this let's say to 50 and last but not least we're gonna go and center this title now 
this solid line we can keep it on solid we don't need to add any text and under style i'm gonna go and choose once again blue but increase it to two so it's gonna be more thick and we don't need any gap inside here and we actually want to go and move it closer in here and last but not least let's create some description of this category so i'm gonna go play something i already made and adjust typography so i'm gonna go for text to make it a little bit smaller and move it inside here and now this starts to look really good but those posts they don't so let's fix that it's very easy once again simply we need to go inside here and firstly let's take a look at our post query what we actually want to go and show because i already named this my recipe ideas obviously i'm gonna be putting here only the recipes this is where category when creating blog posts comes very very handy because now i can simply go inside here and include by terms click on it and it will automatically show me all of my categories and here i want to go and simply click on recipes and it will put all blog posts that have category recipes in them automatically inside here which is great so now we can go and style these images because they don't look great once again we're gonna go and get rid of gray border color and also content padding let's put it on zero now image i think we can actually keep the size i like it so i'm gonna go and put it into 300 category we actually cannot change it because we have turned it off inside here so as you can see if i turn it on you can for example go and let's say you want to go change colors and stuff like that but i don't actually like to show the category because it's obviously only recipes in here so i'm gonna go and turn that off in here i'm gonna go and once again adjust our title so i'm gonna go for h2 this make it maybe a little smaller and also line height so the space in between lines i want to go and make it a little smaller so actually let me go like this and let me put 1.3 okay and now we can have title spacing which is the space between image and title and move it a little bit like this and this starts to look really good i'm gonna go use my blue color so it stay consistent all around the website i actually want to go here and make it hover color different so people can actually see it when they hover over it like this let me go to blue and simply lower it like this a little bit so it has some response and once again we're gonna go and edit our text i actually like this color so we can keep that but we're gonna go and adjust our text now the problem is there is i think too little amount of text so i simply come in here and let's put up 200 characters and this starts to look really really good i like it i'm gonna go move it a little bit closer and this looks awesome so finally let's edit our button let's say we're gonna go for our orange color we can go change border radius so it fits our different border radiuses and we can keep the padding how it is so the size around it let's also change responsiveness okay this looks nice and we have also button spacing so let's put it like this and i think this looks really really good so we can simply update our changes but here is very important trick because you need to do this only once now if i want to go and recreate this once again i don't need to go and type everything from beginning i simply can go and duplicate everything and if you don't see it inside here you can go under navigation and here you can see everything selected so you may be seeing now the divider it's kind of hard to click on it because we have played around with those margins but you can simply come inside here duplicate it and put it under post also inside here so it's gonna be easier for some of you to do it like this so we're gonna go duplicate also this and now we can see we have the exact same side in here but we don't need to change anything we can simply go into post query and look at this 
we're gonna go include by terms, get rid of recipes, and we're gonna, for example, put our dream house. So it will automatically take all of those blog posts and put them inside here. I'm gonna also change the title, you can also change the description, and you can see this looks really, really great, and it was so easy to make. So you can make a lot of content like this very, very easily. Now, before we move on, let's also add a little bit more of margin, but firstly, you can see, we have to unlink those values, because we only want to move it on one way, so let's put it, let's say, on 100. So it is clear separation. I'm gonna go and hit update. And let's see our website. Now we can see those are randomized. We have our sidebar here with working social icons. We also have our working links inside here. Those can be your blog posts, your pages and stuff like that. You have your last post and you have also your categories inside here and you can create how many you want of them. So this looks really good. Now let's finally go and change this in our heading, so our navigation and create some pages. So whenever you want to go and create pages, let me clean this up for you, you actually want to go to your dashboard. And under pages, you can see currently those pages are the ones showing inside here, but also inside here. And we want to go and create new pages, so I'm going to go and hit add new. Now I'm gonna go and call this recipes and publish our page. But you can see the problem that even if I reload this page, it won't be automatically added inside here because this is our navigation menu. And whenever you wanna go and change this navigation, you simply go under appearances and here go and find menus. And it will show you the one we are currently using. But if you want to go and create your new menu, you simply go here and create a, and click on create a new menu. So I'm going to go and click on it and it will automatically take you in here. So I'm going to go and name it my menu. You can name it however you want. And here you can choose display location. So we can currently see that our primary menu, the ones we have been using before, is the same for this part. This is our primary menu and also our footer menu, which is obviously inside our footer. So let me just put it as a primary menu inside here. So I'm going to go and create menu. And in here I can go and select pages I would like. Now you can see we don't see our recipe pages, but we simply need to go to view all and here you will be able to see them. So I definitely want to go and add up our homepage, our about us page, contact us page and also our recipe page. Now we also can go back and create more pages. So for example, I can go and create kids activities or you can go and create something completely different. For example, you can go and put up a traveling. If you want to go and create traveling blog post, you can simply do that inside here and you will go and see all of them in here. So I'm going to go refresh this site and you can see when I click on view all, we have all of our sites. So once again, I'm going to go click home, about me, contact us page, kids activities, recipes, and also traveling. And I'm going to go and click add to menu. And we can see they are going to be added to our menu. So when I save this menu, you can see that it automatically is going to change inside here when I reload this page. But here is the problem. I don't like this order. I want to go and have contact and about last and those activities first. So it's really simple. You can simply go drag it and move it around here. So I'm going to go move contact to page and you can also create cool tricks. So when I'm going to go save this just to show you when I reload it, you can see the order was changed. But if you had multiple pages, for example, you are a big blogger and you have so much blog posts that you have a very, very big amount of pages. You can also go and put them under one. So I'm going to go and create sub sections. So it will create this cool drop up window. As you can see, once again, I'm going to reload this site and you can see that we have this cool editing inside here. You simply need to go and change in transparent header. You're going to go and change the background and it will be completely visible. But for this tutorial, we want to go and keep it simple. So 
like this and save it. So we can see, once again I'm gonna go, update this, we have our custom heading and if you wanna go and change a heading down here, you simply need to go, if you wanna go you can create new one or simply use the same and click footer menu and it will automatically change it also in here. Now before we move on, let me also go and fix this footer. So we're gonna be using our logo and we're gonna put our copyright disclaimer. So now I wanna simply go inside here, click on this pencil and it will automatically take you to your footer menu. So inside here, firstly let's change this media. So I'm gonna go and delete this one and add our media. So this is our logo, I'm gonna go and insert it. And this looks really good. You can go play around with what you can actually go and change the size like this. But I like generally how it looks. Here, under copyright, I actually want to go delete this one and replace it with look announced 22, 23, 24, 25, whatever you like, you can place in there so that people know that you are the rightful owner of this website. Also, you can go and play around with this layout. So for example, if you have multiple pages inside here, you don't necessarily need to have it in line, but you can also go and put it as a stack inside here. So it's really useful. But for this example, I'm gonna go and stick with inline and publish those changes. Now when they are published, we can go and finally move on. And I'm gonna go and click on recipes because we need to go here and add our recipes. But here is the problem. We don't actually see edit with Elementor option anywhere inside here. Well, that's actually easy fix for that. We need to go back to our dashboard, go to pages and find the one we wanna go and edit. So in this case, we wanna go and edit recipes. So I'm gonna go and click on edit or simply click on recipes and here you will see the option edit with Elementor. So you want to go, click on it and it will automatically take you for, to Elementor for that specific page and put up some recipes. Now here is the good deal. I'm going to go and create one single column. I'm going to go and adjust our box to 1300 so it's a little bit wider. And here I want to go and create something like this. But because I've already created, you can actually move stuff in between pages really easily. What do I remind that? I simply want to go, hit Ctrl C inside here and paste it in here. Or you can simply go and hit copy and hit paste inside here. So you can do it easily also like this. So let's say I want to go and get a divider. So I'm going to copy it and paste it inside here. The same thing with text editor, so I'm gonna go and hit copy and paste it somewhere around here. Now, if you miss it, don't worry, you can go and move it like this or simply you can go once again into navigation and move it inside here, which is a way better option. Now, last but not least, we wanna go and copy our post block and paste it inside here. Now, here's the thing. You can see this looks good, but it's kind of wide. And we can actually fix that really easily because we can move it from three number of items in one row. From three, let's increase it to four. And you can see that it will squish it back. But here is the problem. I actually have only three blog posts under those recipes category. So it will not show you the fourth one. But if I choose inside here, I imported some new stuff. And for example, let's put up our soups. It will actually show you more stuff inside here and this looks really good. If you are having multiple posts, you simply, you also want to go inside here and put this down there so people can actually go and navigate it in between. And this is the really simple way how you can go and edit your blog pages without needing to spend a lot of time. So now when I want to go visit this, you can see it looks really simple and whenever people click on it, it will look even better. So once again, I'm gonna go and hit now traveling. And once again, really simply, I'm gonna go and duplicate stuff inside here. So firstly, don't forget to change the size of this, to change the site. 
I'm gonna hit copy and simply paste it inside here. So I'm simply gonna go and name this travel adventures and you can go change the text inside here and once again we don't need to worry about anything, we simply go to post query and change it from recipes to let's say our travel adventures, it will be also food related travel adventures and you can go and make this really easily and you can see our post can be doubled as I already mentioned so we have Mexican vegan lentil soup inside here but we also have it inside our recipes. So this is really the cool way about doing this, this method that you can use the same thing for different reasons. But let's say you actually don't want to show something in here. Let's say you don't want to go and show this baked Asian omelette because it looks kind of weird with this white plate on white background. So you can actually go and exclude blog post specifically. So I'm gonna go, click on exclude by, and hit specific post. It will show you new options inside here and I'm gonna go, click on it and write baked and it will show you everything, every blog post containing that keyword in their title. So I'm gonna go click on baked Asian omelette and you can see it's easy as that it disappeared. So I'm gonna go hit update and this is the easiest way how you can go and do it with every single page you wanna have. So now we have our traveling page we have our recipes page, we have our home page, you obviously want to go and put up your own blog post and we have our cool looking home page. Now we simply need to go and change about us. You can see that this doesn't really fit that good so I'm gonna go click on edit with Elementor and once again move this, we can actually go and get rid of this and move this whole section down so it actually creates more space. I'm gonna go put it on 95 or 150. Now this looks really good. Let's increase it even a little bit. So the white line is under the black bar and this looks really good. You can go put some information inside here, put up your picture in here. So let's say we're gonna go put this photo inside here. So you, you can also go at your mission, simply delete this and put up everything you would like inside here. The same thing about your values. I'm not gonna tell you what you should write under your own values or mission, it's your thing. And if you don't like it in here, you can simply go and delete this section. You can also go, if you have some testimonials or some recommendations from other people, maybe you were mentioned in some publication. So for example, if you were in news, you can go and put up pictures in news and cite what they've been talking about you. It acts like a testimonial and it will create a good about me page. So this is really up to you how you want to go and design it. Now the same thing goes with contact page. You want to go and design it however you like. But I will show you some cool trick. Now I simply want to go and move this whole section. So let me actually move it to 200. Okay, let's unlink those values first. And move it a little bit like this. Okay, this looks really good. We can keep this contact this page. You obviously want to go and fill up your own information. So you're going to put your mail, your phone number. If you want location, you can put it inside here or simply you can click on it and hit delete. Social icons, once again, you can simply go and copy them from here and paste them inside here. It's going to be the same. And here we have a let's get in touch option. Some bloggers don't like it, I personally don't necessarily like it, but I know that many people do like it. So if you remember, as I mentioned with start templates under plugins, when we downloaded it, it also downloaded WP Forms Align, which is basically this. This is your pre-written contact me form. So whenever somebody gonna go and fill this up and send message, it will automatically send you to email you have created this WordPress with. So you want to go and check that out. If you want to go, go change some settings inside here, for example, put up some different email, you can do it easily inside here. You can see your email, you can even send up emails to additional people and they will also try to go and upgrade you to pro, but you don't actually need that. You can easily get along with this free version. So now you can go and change background. If you want to add something, you can add something. But this is basically it. This is your fully functional 
WordPress blog made within few hours. It really is not that hard and everybody can do it. You can see that we went from something looking like this to something looking like this with basically no time. And look how cool this looks. We have our logo, we have our custom navigation, we have our automatically updated blog post, also our sidebar with many cool features and also many options how to display our blog post. Also, we have our functioning buttons, we have our questions and our footer menu as well. Well, we have also working pages and also now you know how to go and upgrade your about me page and also the way how people can go and contact you in here. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and one final advice. Whenever you want to go and start something like blog, there is one biggest hurdle and that's actually starting. Many people will go and watch this video, they will think about it and never take action. But this is the most important part about your blog journey, actually creating something. Even though it won't be looking great from get-go, you will not get millions and millions of visitors from get-go. You actually need to start somewhere and this is the best option. So you can go rewind this video and start step by step so you can actually go and get closer to your dream of being a professional blogger and actually earning money online by doing something you actually love. If you watched this entire tutorial, I would like to thank you. Subscribe if you learned something new. If you have some specific question, don't worry, you can go and simply put them down into comments and I will definitely answer all of them. This is everything from me. Good luck in your blogging journey and goodbye.